another edition of You Can Have It All. I am your girl, your good friend. Listen, Leslie T. Mitchell, I am so excited to have you tuning in with me today. And listen, for all of my newcomers, welcome, welcome, welcome. We are family now, okay? We, we are like cousins, you know, all of our other viewers. Y'all know how we do it on You Can Have It All. And so for those of you who are new, listen, I just want to tell you just a little bit about myself. My name is Leslie T. Mitchell. I am out of sunny South Florida. You know, I'm a mom. I'm a wife of 25 plus years. I'm an entrepreneur. I own several businesses. You know, I'm a realtor. I'm a coach. I'm an author. I'm a motivational speaker. Listen, you name it. <laughs> I claim it. No, I'm just playing. But that's just a little bit about what I do. It's not really who I am as a person. As a person, I am a child of the King of the Most High of God. Uh, Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Uh, I am humbled. Uh, you know, I really have a heart and passion for seeing other people win. And so I'm excited that you are joining me for this edition of You Can Have It All because today, y'all, today we are going to be discussing, right, how you can dare to be different. How you can dare to be different. So you may see me look down a little bit because I have some notes because I don't want to miss anything. Um, so yeah, so let's let's talk about daring to be different. I want you to begin to think about that. Like, what does that mean to you? Daring to be different because so often, you know, we like to play copycat, and it's okay if you're copying the right cat, as they say, right? But you know, you have to be bold enough to be different and, and to dare to maybe step outside the box, to dare, you know, to speak out when other people are not. And so, let's go and talk, look at really quickly about uh, the definition of dare. And so, dare means to have the courage to do something. To have the courage to do something. I don't know if you, um, when you grew up, if you ever played that, um, that, that, that game, um, dare, truth or dare, right? You know, you had to either tell the truth or you, they, they would dare you to do something. And so uh, I would pick dare because, like, I am daring. I, I am. I have the courage, right, to to try new things, to do, to step out the box. You know, to not be pigeonholed. And so. But we're going to talk about, you know, daring to be different. And then let's really quickly look at this definition of different. Different means not the same, okay, not the same as another or each other, okay? So we're all different, right? You know, God made each and every one of us different, unique, you know, just like our fingerprints. No human has the same fingerprint. Like, isn't that amazing? And so we all have different DNA. We all, you know, are different in size, you know, different in stature, you know, different in height, uh, eye color, hair color. We all are different. And so, and, and oftentimes, you know, it's okay to be different. You, you have to dare to be different because like I said, people try to pigeonhole us. People try to put us in this box and always tell people, listen, honey, I am just cut different. And so, <laughs> y'all listen, oh, here we're going to laugh. We're going to cry. We're going to have some aha moments. We're going to do some self-reflection because this show is really about, you know, encouraging you, right, to believe in the greater in you and letting you know that there is nothing that you cannot do. But oftentimes it starts where in our mindset. And so today we're going to be daring to be different when it comes to our thinking. And then, like I said, it's okay to be different, to stand out, because guess what? Um, God made each of us an original and not a copy, right? Like I said, I'm just cut different. No two people are alike. And so we don't have to play this comparison game. Oftentimes we get caught up in comparing our lives to other people, right? Comparing how we look to other people. Trust me, I know I've been there, done that. And I thank God that I've got delivered from the comparison game because the comparison game stifles you. The comparison game, you know, belittles you. The comparison game makes you feel less than. The comparison game um, hurts your confidence, right? Uh, a lot of people have low self-esteem because what other comparison game? And even if we're not comparing ourselves to other people, oftentimes other people compare us to other people, right? I get often like, oh, you look like such and such. Have you ever heard that? Comparing you. Oh, you remind me of such and such comparing you, whether it's good or bad. So we have to be careful when we are in this comparison game, right? When we're this comparison game. Oftentimes we want to fit in when God has designed us to stand out. Catch that. 
oftentimes we want to fit in when God has designed us to stand out. Again, we are just cut different. And so you have been destined and born to stand out. You're not supposed to, you know, look like everyone else. You know, as believers, as Christians, we are to be in this world, but not of this world. And so we have to stand out. There should be something different about you. People should say, you know what? It's something different about you. I'm not really sure, right? When you walk into a room, you should be able to command that room. You should stand out, not just fit in. Right. Not just, you know, go small, but not in a boastful way or a prideful way, but just in how you carry yourself, you know, and, and who you believe uh, you are to be and who you believe you belong to. And so if you do what 95 percent, check this out, y'all. If you do what 95 percent of the world is doing, then you will end up where 95 percent of the world is going to end up. Did y'all hear that? If you do what 95% of everybody else is doing, you're going to end up like everybody else. That's why sometimes we have to go against Don't be afraid the to, you know, color right. outside we have that gut the lines like, oh, maybe that you never pick up your crayon. Me. And so right. uh, I don't know if up, I want to be involved thing, in that. Right. Remember when growing up. You get up, that gut innate feeling. And in people school, try to make the elementary pressure, school. I remember when you first learned how to color. Into it was doing always something we have to do. do. No, color stand up. inside it's the okay lines. It's okay to go against the grain. Right. It's okay you could not color to be outside the lines. Like, who made that rule? So from the time that we were young, we were being taught, we were being conditioned, right? We were being conditioned and taught to really um, conform to really fit in our box, to really be like a cookie cutter of someone else. Even from being in elementary school, as early as four or five years old, it was like, do not color outside the lines. And so what did that do? It stifles creativity, right? You're, 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 you, you get afraid to step outside the box. Um, even as an adult. And so again, it goes back to how we were conditioned oftentimes as children. We're conditioned sometimes to be afraid to go against the grain, to be afraid to step outside the box. Um, we have to realize that we cannot do the same thing and expect different results. Why? Because that's the definition of insanity. And so I want to challenge you today. Don't be afraid to color outside the lines. Don't be afraid to step outside of your comfort zone. Don't be afraid to be different. It's okay. Right? It's okay. You know, here's something so interesting. This is so like weird, right? Think about this. We will believe what other people say about us, but we won't believe what God says about us. We will believe, we will believe what other people say about us, but we will not believe what God says about us. Or we have a hard time believing what God says about us. This is why you cannot take things personally. Right, what people say about you, because they don't have a heaven or a hell to put you in. I'm just going to keep it real with that. Right? Why are we so concerned and worried about other people's opinions? And we are less concerned and worried about what God has already said, who we are. Right? He said we are fearfully and wonderfully made. He said we are more than conquerors. He said we are the apple of his eye. Right? He said you know, all these beautiful things about us. Because he cares and he loves us. But we won't be like, ah, you know, that person tells you, you know, you're not going to amount to be anything. You go believe in that. If that person say they don't love you, oh, woe is me, they don't love me no more. Right? Not understanding that we have the greatest gift of love from Jesus Christ. That's what we should be focusing on. That's where we learn how to be different. We dare to be different. You got to believe that you are unique and important despite what people around you may say. It, it That's just how it is, right? So listen, listen, before we continue, we're going to take a quick, quick commercial break. Just a quick commercial break. Uh, I want to share something with you guys. I want to show you this video. And so we'll be right. I'll be right back. We'll be right back. All right. Just give me a second. Hey everybody, this is your girl Leslie P. Mitchell and I'm excited to be coming to you today to invite you to be an exclusive member of my new VIP club, You Can Have It All. And so you're probably saying, well Leslie, what is this mastermind all about? 
we're going to be talking about equipping you, educating you, and empowering you on how to live your best life now. We're going to be focused on three pillars, building, business, and lifestyle. And so in order for you to be a part of this community, all you have to do is click on the link below. See you soon. All right, all right, everyone. Welcome back. Welcome back. So did y'all like that video? I'm so excited, y'all, about my new VIP mastery program that I'm going to be launching. And so listen, if you want more information about that program, you can head over to lesletmitchell.com and you can get all the specifics um, about the program. I am so excited. It is going to be so awesome. And so I hope you all can join me uh, in the VIP mastery program. Trust me, it is going to bless your life. For real, for real. All right, so now let's get back into this thing, all right? So we've been talking about how do you dare to become different. So I wanna give you three ways really quickly of things that you can begin to do, right? To put yourself in a position to dare to be different, to not fit in, to not settle, okay? And so one of the ways that you can do that is to intimately get to know who you are and what you represent. To intimately get to know who you are, know yourself and what, and not only what you represent, who you represent. Here's the thing, knowing who you are and who you're called to become in Christ is the first step really and truly in learning how to see yourself. We have to begin to look at ourselves through his lens and not through our own lens because our lens, y'all, it could be out of focus. Our lens can be a little tainted. Our lens, you know, needs some adjusting, right? I wear contact lenses and, and, you know, and glasses. And so sometimes I have to go to the eye doctor, right, to get a new prescription because my lens can be blurry. They can be out of focus. And sometimes that's how we are with our own selves. We're looking at ourselves through the wrong lens. We're looking at ourselves through the wrong perspective. And so we got to align how we see ourselves as how Christ sees us that's the true that's the true barometer right that's the true focus so sometimes you're gonna have to adjust your focus you're gonna have to adjust uh your perspective and not look at yourself as you know through the lens of other people but look at yourself through the lens of christ and so really truly sit down and take some time to intimately really get to know who you are and who you belong to because at the end of the day right we all are destined for greatness. You are capable of doing so much. You're capable of doing so much. And so you got to, you know, build that self-confidence up. You got to understand and know who you are without a shadow of a doubt. That's the first thing. All right. Number two, right? You want to try not to take, take things so personally. Y'all know how we can get in our feelings, right? When somebody says something that we don't like. When somebody says something that doesn't agree with what we think, you know, we begin to take things so personally sometimes. We have to learn how to just let things roll off, right? I, I remember I used to be someone who would take things personally. But, you know, throughout the years, God has taught me how to just let things roll off, right? Let, let They don't have any impact on who he says I am. They don't have any impact on my abilities uh, to do the things that I am destined and designed to do. And so... You know, we have to begin to speak our own truth. Don't allow other people to speak your truth for you. Speak our own truth and don't take things so personally. Uh, you don't have to worry about what other people think or feel about you. Again, let it just roll off. It, it, you know, we sometimes, we get, I said earlier, we give so much credit to other people, right? We give so much credit to other people and our feelings can get hurt easily. Uh, but we have to develop, you know, that, that, that thick skin, that tough skin. Like it's just words, you know, growing up, we still have the saying sticks and stones may break your bones, but words will never hurt me. And that's how we have to uh, become because words, they can crush us at times. But once you know who you are, right? Once you, once, once you really, truly, you know, understand the power, the dominion, the authority that has been placed inside of you, other people's words won't weigh that, don't have that much weight, especially when they're negative. They won't have that much weight, right? And so often, you know, people, you know, say things spitefully. People say things, you know, uh, to hurt us on purpose, just to see how you're going to react. And so, 
there to be different. Don't even give it much thought. I know it's, it's probably, you know, easier said than done. And it takes some practice, right? It takes some practice. But trust me, you can get there. I had to get there, right? I had to get there. And um, it wasn't always easy, especially when uh, you, someone you love says something, right, that, that's hurtful or that's demeaning or, um, you know, not supportive, you know, or cruel or whatever, right? We have to learn just to let those things roll off. Just roll off and keep it moving. Just roll off and keep it moving. The third thing is that you have to realize that you are unique and important despite what people around you must say. You, I'm talking to you, you got to realize that you are unique and important despite what people will say or what they will believe. Here's the thing. People attack what they don't understand. Catch this. People attack what they don't understand. And so oftentimes feelings get in the way that clouds our judgment. You know, God has given us a unique vision, skills, dreams, like I said earlier. And sometimes people will attack what they don't understand. God gives you your vision. He don't give it to your spouse sometimes. He doesn't give it to your parents. He doesn't give it to your friends. He doesn't, you know, give it to your children. He doesn't give it to your coworkers, your business partners. But we get so excited, y'all. We run out and we start telling everybody what our dreams is, what we want to do. And they're like, y'all heard me earlier. They're like, cha bye. Mm-mm. But that comes with maturity. That comes with understanding, you know, again, that you are unique, that you are important, and that, you know, it's okay for people not to get it. It's okay. It's okay. But it doesn't mean that you abort the assignment. It doesn't mean that you're not equipped for the assignment. It doesn't mean you're not called for the assignment. It doesn't mean that. Because if God calls you to a thing, he's going to see you through a thing. And so I hope this blessed y'all today, you know, this conversation we had on daring to be different. You know, like I said, I'm, I just want to begin to like drop little seeds in you, right? Drop little seeds in you, letting you know that you can be empowered. You can be encouraged. You can be equipped, right, to live, a, to live the greater life that's already inside of you. And if you're living your greatest life, right? But I'm, some per I'm the person who believes that we all can continue to grow. We're never in a position where we know it all. We never in a position where we want to stop growing, stop elevating, stop learning, stop transforming, stop helping other people reach their best self. And so that's really what this platform is all about. And so I want to thank you guys for tuning in um, for wherever you're watching us from, from whatever time you are streaming this. I thank you and I pray that this message, you know, blessed you. And if it blessed you, I would love for you to invite someone to join us. Uh, you can have it all. Invite your family, your friends, whomever to be a part of our community. Because we, I told y'all, we family. You are stuck with me and I am stuck with you. All right. And so until next time, have a blessed blessed day, evening, morning, whatever time you're watching this in. Have a blessed, blessed day. I love you. Mean it. Deuces. Bye-bye.